You know, I think I deserve the award for having the best background when filming a video ever because there's no other Yugi tuber that has a pool in the background, well, let alone with a screen and what looks like a beach deck and everything else. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into today's video of, well, I think Ash Blossom needs to be hit on the next balance. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Colossal Titan smash the ever living crap out of that subscribe button and the like button so that we can get to 801,000 subscribers. So I've been doing a lot of play testing on EDO Pro and things like that with Flunderies getting ready for the regional in Georgia May 8th, which if you're going to be there, I will be there. Feel free to come up and say hi, I'll trade, sell cards, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, and something that I've been running into a lot, I mean, granted, Flunderies is very susceptible to Ash Blossom, but I've been running into Ash Blossom. And I'm not saying that every single deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! needs to be created equally. That's just not a possible thing. Some decks can be given extra support and things like that. But I feel like hand traps as a whole need to be reeled in in some way. You know, I made a video about this four years ago, and I said, does Ash Blossom deserve to be banned or limited in some way on the ban list at that time? And what few comments I had was, yeah, it does need to be hit because every deck is just, here's my archetype plus three Ash Blossom. Like every deck was playing three Ash Blossom because it was really good back then. Um, arguably better back then than it is now because we just have a bunch of more hand traps in the game that are potentially better to have at different times in the game. Plus we have call by and cross out designator now and things like that. But what bothers me about Ash Blossom is that it covers so many cards with all three of its different effects. I think someone did a tally and it's like at least over a hundred. And the thing is, is that when you have a card like Ash Blossom that covers that many cards, I mean, I just consider it an Omni Negate whenever I have it or the opponent has it. You know, you make the opponent play with one less card in their hand and they're forced to have another extender. That's assuming that the only hand trap you have is one Ash Blossom. You know, you look at these 60 card decks like 60 card prank kids or even 60 card based aka badass sexy engine and they are playing like 14 to 15 hand traps like 14 on average three nibiru three valor one imperm three ogre three ash i mean they're playing all these things and the other 44 cards in their deck are arguably just combo starters or extenders or whatever it is they need to get to their end goal of having a omni negate break my board scenario and I feel like because of that, hand traps are starting to take a mold of their own in the sense of if a deck can fit in 10 hand traps, it's going to fit in 10 hand traps. And I just think it's really bullshit. And maybe I'm jaded because of the fact that, you know, every time I go summon Eaglin, it gets Ash. Every time I go Robina and it's like my opponent just knows I don't have the extender, like... I'm just going summon Robina and they ash that. And it's like, really, bro? And yeah, you can do things like if, you, if you're if you worried about the ash, then you know you can do things like play your duality or play your prosperity or play your extra first, play your Rota first, play these other search cards to try and bait out the ash. But then, oh, they don't have the ash, but by God, they have the Droll and Lockbird. And it's like, you lose either way. And Call by the Grave is only one card. Cross Out Designator is arguably a very inconsistent card because if you don't have that card in your deck, you can't use it. Cross Out is only as good as the cards that are in your deck. You know, take a deck like Based. If you're having a mirror match and you're going against Base, Cross Out's going to be very good because both of you are going to be playing many of the same cards, many of the same hand traps. So it benefits you to play Cross Out if you can fit it in because it's just another card that stops hand traps. And the opponent's only going to open with so many. You know, they open up five cards and if they open up five hand traps but they're all multiples of each other, then unless it's something like that can be used multiple turns or multiple times in a turn like Valor or Imperm, it's not really going to be helpful to them. You look at a deck like Sky Striker that just has Ray and Rose as their main main deck monsters everything else is just hand traps ogre nibiru ray you name it or not ray uh, ogre nibiru and ash droll valor imperm whatever else that you can fit in and to me it's like god if you don't have the extenders you just lose the game but yet at the same time you can make the argument of well if the opponent bricks because of all their hand traps then you know they're gonna brick because of it but in those decks, all they need is that one card. All they need is that right of Aramiser to get their combos going. And then you just lose because they opened up the hand trap and you didn't. I'm not saying that Ash Blossom needs to be banned. It's just that I feel like something needs to happen with its consistency. And we saw this in the OCG. I believe they put Ash Blossom to two 
and it may even still be at two, and then I think that they brought it back up to three. But for a time, they did mess around with Ash Blossom at like one or two copies to see what it would do to the meta. Because it's kind of like Max C in that regard. You know, three Max C was balanced, two was okay, and then one was just luck sacky. If you have the Max C, you were just gonna win the game. Ash Blossom isn't comparable. You're not gonna auto lose if the opponent has the one of Max C. But still, it just prevents decks from being able to play a lot of the time, especially these lower tier decks. Like you look at Spiral, granted they've had hits on the balance and they were a tier zero deck for a time a few years back. But if you just hit their quick fix or something or hit their double helix, I don't know anything about Spiral. I just know that if you stop the link, you win. If you Ash Blossom that deck at the right time, you win the game. Like they they, they can't do anything else. And, it, you know, especially with Flunderies, I mean, Droll kills the deck, Lancet kills the deck, ash kills the deck like there's only so many ways there's only so many times that you can play through hand traps and there's only so many ways that you can do that like if you don't open up map then you're probably not playing through hand traps if you don't open up imperm or excuse me call by the grave or book of moon you're not really going to be able to play through hand traps if you don't open up d shifter you're not going to be able to play through as many hand traps even if you open up d shifter then they can still ash you and you can't call by them because the ash gets banished because of the d shifter so it's like you're just screwing yourself and making the ash even better so Guys, please, I just wanted to put out a short discussion video. There are a lot of different things that people can make arguments about when it comes to this. Some people would say, well, Droll needs to be hit instead, or Valor, or Imperm. And I just, I feel like as a whole, Ash being the biggest problem because it's played in so many freaking decks, that the hand traps need to be wheeled in somehow. You know, think about everything that we have. Like, just to name a few, we've got... Lancia, Nibiru, Ogre, Ash, Valor, Imperm, uh, all of the Ghost Sisters, you know, Winter Cherries, uh, Underroot, Spooky Dogwood, I mean, the Ghost Bell, like, the, the list goes on and on and on, and to me, it, it just gets asinine, like, there was a match that I played, I'll leave you with this story, where I... Uh, the opponent used Ash on me, I'm like, sweet, I've got my one of, I've got the Call by the Grave. My opponent hits me with another hand trap. They hit me with Ghost Bell. Cyframe Gear Gamma, too, to mention one, which is just idiotic, in my opinion. It's a brick that you get just so rewarded for playing. And to me, it's just, it's asinine. And I'm like, as with the Ghost Bell example, I'm like, you know, I'm playing this one of to stop your bullshit hand trap. Why should I get punished? Because you're playing an out to my out, which outs your out. Like, it's it's like outception. It's like hand trapception. I'm getting punished for playing call by because you have the ghost bell. To me, that just seems really dog shit. Like, if I knew you were going to have the ghost bell, I wouldn't play call by at all. Now, granted, that's like Maximilian Pegasus, let me see what you're playing type of style. But to me, like, is, is that really healthy? To me, it's, it's really not because it's just like, oh, I'm going to play this. Oh, well, I've got the out. No, I've got this out and this out and this out. And it's like, bro, like, I can't even attempt to play because you have all of the outs already. Like... Yeah, people are going to have God opening hands. It happens. But the hand traps, I feel, especially with just how many we have, if the if the numbers were dwindled down to like, you know, Ash at two or one and Ghost Bell two or one, you know, they adjusted the ratios for all these hand traps, then I don't think it would be as bad. And people would have to adjust the ratios and their decks as a whole to fit those. And this isn't like, oh, soy boy, he's whining because he's not good. Bro, I'm the best Flunderese player I know. Like, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I know that deck inside and out, forwards, backwards, and sideways. You give me Branded, and I'm going to be able to play around hand traps with the best of them. But that's the thing, is that something like Branded has an easier chance of playing around hand traps than Flunder does. And yes, you can make the argument it's an inherent problem with Flunder not being able to play around hand traps as well. But at the same time, you could apply this argument to all decks because of the fact that hand traps are so prevalent in 2022 Yu-Gi-Oh! And I feel like something needs to be done about it because it's so asinine to like try and break the opponent's board and you just you get ashed out of left field. And when you do have the out, there are so many hand traps and outs in general in the game that they have an out to your out. And to me, that's just, that is insane power creep. Maybe that's a bad take, maybe that's a hot take, but to me, it just something needs to be fixed about it. Whether you need to limit Ash, whether you need to ban Ash, whether you need to put Drone Lockbird to one, put Ghost Bell to two, I don't know. But if there's anything I've learned from Konami's ban list in the past is that they want people to play new cards that they push out. So 
if they want people to start playing, say, Spooky Dogwood, maybe they'll ban Ash. Like, I'm not saying that they would do that. I'm just saying, as an example, they want you to play new cards. So eventually, I think that they're going to do, like, what they did with Duelist Alliance and hit a bunch of the old stuff, whether it's generic support or not, whether it's hand traps or not, to make you play new shit. I don't know. Guys, please, let me know in the comments below what you think. Am I just... Am I giving a really shit take? Um, I might even lose some subs for saying that Ash needs to get hit, but I made the same kind of video four years ago, but with a better background this time around. Guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.